Okay, so I couldn't wait. I had to get into this thing. Um, so, I started off, of course, pulled the cover on this thing. Um, of course, this one's going to need to get replaced. This is the cracked one. And I'm going to start putting the parts in these bins. I pulled the first screw out, which was in the cylinder head, to pull this cover off. It was pretty stuck in there. Um, so I did the old tappy-tap-tap trick, which is if you get these Weira screwdrivers, which I really like. There's other ones that have this. They have a pound through on them. So you can actually put it on a screwdriver and then hit it with a hammer. And if you're ever trying to get un st bolts, bolts that are stuck, unstuck, uh, especially for steel and aluminum, this becomes a problem quite often. And if you just shock them a little bit um, and take your time, like don't hit them a couple of times and then try it until it breaks. Tap, 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 try it, tap, 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 and just keep tapping it until it does finally come loose. Don't just keep forcing it because these little things will snap off and then you got snapped in the cylinder head. Now I'm not particularly worried about that one because this, I already know that this cylinder is probably locked up. Uh, I'm plug wrench here. Pretty sure that's going to be the case. I don't think it's going to be the crank, um, but you never know. I'm going to take a look in there and yeah, I see corrosion in there already. So we're probably going to replace the barrel on this and the cylinder or the cylinder and the piston. Um, just because it's going to need that. There is some corrosion in the carburetor. So same thing, going to have to clean that out. Um, the gasket's surprisingly still soft and pliable. So that's good. Um, we'll take that off. Um, although apparently you can order these carbs as well. You can just, they're already still available. Um, the choke linkage is important to pay attention to. That's on this puppy here. Um, there's some corrosion there. What I'm going to probably end up doing is going and getting these sandblasted and powder coated. Um, or enamel coated actually, because that's might be too hot for powder coating. I'll find out. Maybe it's ceramic, who knows. But the whole thing's gonna get rebuilt. Um, I haven't got the parts yet for the other things, but I figured I'd dig into it and see what I'm in for on this saw, so at least I know what parts I'm gonna have to order, because I might as well order it all at the same time. So uh, yeah, I need to get my wrenches on that, get that off there. I should probably go outside and get my, my complete wrench set, but I'll use what's in the shop right now. Okay, um, throttle linkage, is that come undone somehow? No, I don't see that though. All right, well, we're not too stuck yet. I might as well turn this around so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're going to pull the carb off here, and uh, I might actually end up ordering some new parts even if they're not necessarily broken. So like I might order a new stator and plug wire and all that because it doesn't honestly hurt. These are pretty old, and I would hate to put all this work in and then have to pull it apart just to replace a stator. So we're going to do probably some unnecessary things at first, but in the... Uh, idea of being preventative in the long run. So right now the name of the game is just disassembly. Uh, yeah, and she is sticky. She is very sticky. Come on. Very careful, push back. Nope. This one's a bit stuck, to say the least. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. There's a good reference in there somewhere. Hmm. Come on. Come on, baby. Let's just keep trying to pull this off. That might actually end up working as a puller and pull itself off if I keep cranking on it. Let's find out. Well, of course, my wrench won't fit in there because it's not very thin. <laughs> Just gotta keep yanking on it, I guess. Mm. Let's do a bit of leverage. Yeah, there we go. She's coming now. There we go. She's coming. Pretty dirty, but that's kind of to be expected. Um, if I can, so like I pointed out on that other saw there that there was a, uh, seemed to be a dead man switch on it. If it is an option that I can just 
swap out the handle portion of this. Um, and that's a good upgrade. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. If it's available, maybe it's not. Who knows? Anyhow, I might just shut up for now and then put this on a speed multiplier so you guys can see this whole process without hearing me waggle my jaw. Maybe I'll keep talking and just put it in high speed anyway. And you guys can listen to me talking away like a chipmunk. Maybe you'd like that. Who knows? Okay. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Now, governor linkage. Uh, we got to get that off. This uses a fan type governor. Hmm, this is actually getting frustratingly. It is wedged in there. Now, how? Both of those out at the same time. Um, I suppose I could unscrew it from there, but I feel like there should be an easier way of doing this. Uh, C clips on the throttle. Okay, let's see if those will come off. Yep, those are going to come off. Let's not lose this. There's one. Put that over there. And this should just tap it, tap it, tap it. Yeah, that's stuck in there pretty good. Oh, God, those switches, those kill switches. Holy crap. Okay, that's one off. Uh, yeah, that one's going to come. Okay, let's do this. No breaky. No break, please. No break. And don't fly anywhere that I can't find you. I should really get some different size screwdrivers out here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Come on. There we go. I should really bring my tool bag out. That might be smart. Okay, now that is off, so I should be able to... <laughs> yeah, Chris, that's... I don't know if that's going to happen as easily as you'd hoped it would. That'll eventually have to come out, but I don't think it's going to come out right now, so... Small flathead. We got the tool bag. We got the sockets. And yes, I keep my torque wrenches in the case. Because they're expensive. And they're calibrated. I don't want to mess them up. Okay. Now, this screw... I am going to immediately put back in place with the linkage once it's disconnected because I do not want to lose that or not know where it's supposed to go. There we go. Go back in, please. Yeah, there we go. And, ooh, one thing I should have noted, and I should do that right now before I get too far along here, and I'll be able to see it in the video later on that uh, that linkage went to the farthest down hole on that. So everyone remember that and tell me later. And 
God, this is a tight fit in there. Okay, now we have a chance of getting that out. So we have a chance, not guaranteed. Come on. Sure it is, there we go. Oof, yeah, and that carburetor definitely is gonna need a clean out. So she's pretty dirty. Although the brass inside's pretty good shape. Um, it still works. <laughs> it's actually not horrible in there, if you guys can see in there. Um, I'll definitely get a carb rebuild kit because it's pretty, pretty gross. Definitely needs some cleaning up. So we'll put that in its own little bin here. Um, yeah, I'll put that all in there. I'm actually put that, put that. That's the carb gasket. There it goes there. Okay. Let's just pull this spacer out. That's actually in perfectly good condition, so we don't need to do anything with that. This little heat shield here, it's stuck on there. Same thing, pull that off. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of gaskets on this thing. The side of the piston actually doesn't look terrible, but there's a lot of corrosion around here. Um, so it is gonna be one heck of a cleanup, which is gonna be, uh, be a fun thing to do. Now, the question is, Can I still get the torque still in there? Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. T27. I can't exactly remember. That feels too loose. T30. Even that is not particularly tight. Oh. I know these are going to be tight, but... This might be the problem here. Actually, those are Allen keys. Those are torques. Probably should have thought of that. They wouldn't be torques. Duh. Um, I'm going to be metric. Ooh, I don't know if these ones are going to get down there. They're not going to get down there with this plastic sleeve on them. All right, where do I got other ones? Five mil. All right, let's see if it is a five mil. That feels about right. Okay, so now that's pretty in there. However, I'm honest to goodness concerned about this thing coming out or not. Whether or not it will actually release. I'm only going to put a bit of torque on it. I'm not going to put a crazy amount on. Oh, yes. That's a good sign right there. That wasn't too hard at all. All right. We're in business, folks. This piston and cylinder is coming off. Now this one I need to get the uh, pull cord cover, I need to get the exhaust for, and I need to replace some hoses. Uh, and I'll need to check the stator once it's freed up, but like I said, I'll probably replace it anyhow. Or of course replace all the bolts that are corroded, because I don't want to run the risk of any of them dying on me. Uh, see, now that's a little bit loose, that's concerning right there. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go up to a 5.5, and no, she's not going to go. So we're going to have to kind of hope for the best on this one. That is super sloppy. Um, let's get a standard one. I think that's the next size up. Nope, that's not the next size up. Let's try this one. Let's see how this one fits for... That's a ball socket one, which is not ideal. But it's seated. I don't think it'll come loose. In case you're wondering, yes, these are. This is a vice crescent wrench. Nope, we're not going to use that one because that's going to roll right up and cause lots of problems. So, well, 
I could have a problem here. Um, T30, let's see how, quick, how tight that fit or not. That is super loose. Okay, we're gonna do, oh, I don't like doing this. Okay, is this the 5.5? That's 70 seconds, let's, let's see about that. That might do it. Nope. She's not. I might have to break out the torch on that one. That's not good. Not good at all. That might actually have been tapped out to a larger size, possibly. Oh, God, nails on a chalkboard with that one. Okay. Not the tightest fit in the world. Pop it, lock it. Watch it. Yep, she's loose. All right. Well, two for three so far. That one's literally full of stuff. Okay. I'm using the Torx to just actually clear the head of the screw out. Sort of like a drill bit, I guess. Good. So in case you're uh, new to repairs, the reason I'm watching it, sorry, that probably got loud. The reason I'm watching it is because you want to watch to see if the Allen key is turning in the head or if the Allen key is actually turning out of the machine. So meaning, is this thing spinning in the head of the Allen key? Is the Allen key spinning in the head of it or vice versa? The last thing you want is to strip one of these things out and have to drill it, um, which might be the case with this one. I might end up having to drill that out if I can't get it to free up, but I would much rather to get it to free up. So we're going to try with a 5.5 here. I'm going to try pounding that in. Given that this is a larger hole, it seems, might just be my imagination, but it looks like a larger hole. This one maybe is now a standard, um, not a metric. Maybe they helicoid all of it for repair earlier. I don't know. We're going to find out here if I can get it out in a minute. It might just be my imagination. Nope. See, now it's turning in the screw, so I'm going to give that a lot more shock. So I've got to get a punch that fits in there. I think we're going to sacrifice a screwdriver. What we're going to do, we're going to sacrifice a screwdriver to the tool gods here. Um, now see how that fits in there, but it doesn't fit in there. It doesn't fit in there. 
Uh, it does fit in there though. Okay, so maybe those two are larger. Um, we're gonna sacrifice this to the tool gods. Smashy, smashy. I am so sorry. Cylinder head came off. I apparently didn't record it. Anyhow, now I'm gonna do time lapse because I'm an idiot and I didn't record that last five minutes. And there's no point in you watching me struggle to get stupid things off at this point. Any case, the cylinder uh, was stuck. The bore um, was more or less fine. Um, it was just stuck from corrosion. It is a bit polished up, so it is, you know, I can replace it without worrying about that. The interior on this thing is immaculate. So now I just gotta get this uh, fan off and um, it should rotate freely at that point. Anyhow, time lapse. So lesson learned, I went back and looked at the manual and sure enough, yeah, I did have to pull those screws out um, and it did come off finally. I was tapping on it. I noticed that this was moving independently of this and realized, oh yeah, okay, they're also both different, two different pieces. This did come off. It did break when it came off, but I kind of expected that. It's in pretty rough condition. I mean, like it's pretty, pretty wobbly and the cracks already forming across there. So that was definitely due for replacement. I remember he was mentioning something about these may have been exposed to salt water or dropped in salt water or something. Now, salt water didn't get into the case, but it definitely might have gotten into this. So uh, that's going to be garbage, effectively, and we'll keep going. Interesting, there's an indexing pin. I just noticed that there, too. Okay. That part's still okay, just needs to be cleaned. Um, now, oh God. That's a stator assembly, and that is definitely seized up. So the puller is going back on this to get that out because there's absolutely zero chance of me popping that out any other way. I'm going to have to do some tapping on it. But back to time lapse. And yeah, I know there's a special puller for this. However, I could see that there were some parts that were detached on the inside. Um, so I figured it's going to be ruined anyhow. Might as well just use a standard puller that I already have. Um, I might actually buy the puller for the future, but uh, this got the job done. A um, lot of struggling, but it did eventually come apart. A uh, bit of heating, but there we go. Okay, that was really, really on there. It is a taper, um, which I kind of expected, but holy crap was it stuck in there. Uh, mainly, I think a lot of it was due to the fact that it was actually stuck in the side here. Um, I can't touch it right now because it's freaking hot. Um... I might have heated up the case a bit, warming it up, but I was going to replace all this anyhow, so that is fine. Um, but I'm in like sin. Hot. And it rotates. Look at that. There we go, boys and girls. And it's rotating here at the uh, chain sprocket. There she goes. Yeah, there's clutch to it. There we go. I'm happy. Okay. Let's uh, get this the rest of the way cleaned up and pull the part. I'm pretty happy though. Back to it. Here's an interesting thing. So this is the governing mechanism. I had already seen this. This is basically from air, but oh, focus. But the way they've got to adjust it is you take this little spring here and you move it up the teeth to change the tension on the governor. That's a cool little system right there. 
So um, it's pretty rusted. I will actually see if I can get a new one of these because I don't know about restoring that one. One thing I might do though that I've already kind of decided on is the trigger, if I can't find one of these because this is already starting to crack open, I'm going to make one out of stainless steel. Ooh. Yeah. Anyhow, I'm going to get back to time lapse here and keep taking this thing apart because, uh, and yeah, you can see the inside's beautiful. So uh, this is more than likely going to work just fine once I get it all cleaned up and restored. Hooray! Oh, focus. Jesus. Okay, back to it. Okay, so there's a ton of oil in here. Now, I pulled what I thought was, or I, without even thinking, um, I pulled the uh, cap off the chain oil reservoir, dumped it out, and of course, my brain didn't go, dummy, there is an actual drain for the gearbox, which I'm fully aware of. I did see it. I just thought, yeah, fail drain. I don't know. My brain was on pause at the moment when that happened. Um, <laughs> but... It's open. As you can see, it's still, it's really clean. I mean, this is going to be a good saw. Um, I was quite surprised, but at the same time, I'm not really shocked that it's a wet clutch uh, inside of here. And man, these are some gears. These are some really big gears for, I mean, when you consider it's a chainsaw, those are, those are reasonable sized big gears. Okay, we are back at it now. Um, so left off yesterday in this state um so i gotta start continuing to pull things apart so i guess i'll start i'll pull off the oil pump i'll pull off the clutch the gears um a couple other things there's some nipples and stuff and then the governor uh and then get this thing split completely apart um there's also a case on the bottom this part here for the fuel tank um and then i'm gonna have to look at getting all these things cleaned so uh, let's continue taking it apart. I'll just go to time-lapse because uh, there's no point filling up my phone storage with video. Anyhow, let's get to it. You didn't start time lapse on that. Thankfully, I didn't do too much. Um, so I just got this apart. Um, this seemed to be the oil pump adjustment. Um, and interestingly, it's a press fit, uh, meaning that this went over top of this, and then that was expanded outwards to hold it in place. Um, so I might machine this to accept a screw that will hold this in place. So it'll bottom out, still allow this thing to turn. Um, rather than have this thing press fit, because it does need to be basically ex expanded out to keep that on there. But then it seems to let it have to let it rotate freely as well, so it might make more sense for me to machine that, put a tiny little, like, 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, whatever that is, shoulder bolt into it to hold it. I don't know, we'll see down the road. But that was an interesting little piece. That's the only piece I've come across so far that is um, a part that's not a direct... Um, both on part that needed to be removed so you could remove it from the housing. So back to time lapse. Um, I thought I had time lapse. Sorry, guys. Um, I just removed the oil pump. That's all I did so far. So I will start time lapse now. So this was a fun one. Uh, this case, of course, had silicone and the gasket, and given its age, it was pretty stuck. So a bit of heat, a bit of tappy, 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 tappy. And yeah, she eventually came apart, so I'm pretty happy with that. It, uh, 
was a little difficult, but not too difficult. Didn't cause any damage, so I'm happy. Okay, so it's mostly apart now. Um, I just knocked this little breather uh, out of there and then this little nipple out of there. Gonna knock that one out. There's a dowel here that has to come out. Um, I have to pull out this, which is one of the very few Allen head bolts on here. Pull that. Um, I am gonna change all these flatheads to Torx or Allen head because, well, we all love to hate flatheads for a very good reason. They have their uses. Um, actually, in ship construction, they have their uses in wood ships or wooden boats because you can always drive them in. And if you strip it, you can always take it back out again while you're driving it in. So not a big deal there. The second thing is it's easier to clean out a slot than it is anything else. Um, so when they're doing wooden shipbuilding, they quite often they'll caulk over top of the screws. And it's not a big deal because you can pull the caulking out and just scrape the uh, caulking out of the slot in the screwdriver. But in this case, I'm not particularly worried about that um, because this thing is going to be taken care of very nicely now um, or very well. So I'm not worried about corrosion blocking up the screws like they were in this. Now you saw, I pretty much got everything out of this thing, every single screw. Actually, not, not pretty much. I did get every single screw out of this thing without breaking a single one. Um, it didn't strip anything out. Uh, and the reason is, very simply, is patience and the right tools. I pointed these out before, these hammer through screwdrivers. These pay in dividends. Yes, they're like 10 bucks a screwdriver, but you'll have them for the rest of your life. They're really useful for so many different reasons. Um, you might have seen me using my head there, literally using my head to hold it down in place. Well, I could put a ratchet over it and turn this thing. These are really, really handy. I, I really recommend these. I'm again, Weira, I'm not sponsored. Hey, Weira, if you want to sponsor me, as everyone says. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I have no affiliation. You have to say this apparently. Um, but they're really good. I love them. Um, I have tons of their stuff. Some of their stuff I don't like. Um, like I don't like their uh, Joker wrenches. I don't like the, um, the ratchet they have with the orbital head on it. Um, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. But their hand tools are fantastic. Um, these just hand, simple hand tools are great. I also have their torque wrenches, which are also really nice. Anyhow, I'm gonna figure, finish taking this apart. Um, I guess I gotta get these studs out of here as well. That'll be fun. Um, gotta get the seals knocked out. And then I can start looking around at how I'm going to take care of this and treat it because you can see the corrosion in there. I definitely wanna clean all that out. I wanna be able to have a good surface so there might be some sort of process to do that. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I can find one that's in better condition. Who knows? That's the only really, really horrible piece is the inside of this and the fan, of course. There's a bit of corrosion here, but that can actually be quite easily dealt with and it's also quite hidden. So if I decide to enamel this, I can actually put a filler and then enamel it and you won't even know it's ever there. It doesn't really affect much. It's the fuel tank, the top of the fuel tank. Um, I am thinking about getting these, stuff, these things powder coated because apparently high temp powder coating does just fine on these. Um, so I'm considering that. Uh, getting the case split was a bit difficult. I did manage to avoid marring it. Um, they used, so there is a proper um, material for sealing this. They used a gasket and then blue silicone. Uh, I'm guessing this is an RTV. So it's not, it was rebuilt not that long ago. Um, but there's a better compound for this. Um, and it's designed for split crank, a split case engines. Honda makes it, Johnson Everood makes it. Um, I think steel has their own version of it and it's basically, it is a, um, sealant that hardens and forms a perfect surface, but then it's easier to split apart later on. This was a bit of a pain. Uh, part of that is because of the dowel alignment dowels, but it was just pretty stuck together. So, um, yeah, we're getting close. So back to time-lapse. So some of you guys might have noticed, I'm actually using a pretty small hammer for all of this, as well as a mallet. Um, I don't use a big hammer for a very good reason. You're more likely to cause damage. Um, and the small hammer will do just fine, you just need to tap it a few more times. Light taps, and many of them, is better than big heavy hits. So that's one little tip to get these things apart. 
All right, got a bit stuck here for a second. Um, trying to get this shaft out here. I'll turn that that way. This is for the idler gear. Um, now I'm certain there's probably a tool that they had for installing or and removing that, but I don't have it. Um, and you don't want to damage the threads because there's a, a Allen screw that threads in from this way. So I don't have that tool, but what I do have is um, the adjusting bar adjustment um, nut or bolt that's uh, bent anyway, so I'm gonna replace it. It's the same thread. So what I can do is I can thread it in there and I can use it to punch out. And I already did use uh, the other Allen key to start punching it out, but. I think that might've done it. Well, maybe not quite. So basically just using a longer Allen here. And we're gonna tap it, tap it, tap it. That's a very, very long shaft. Holy crap. <laughs> you said shaft. That might not be my audience's generation, but if you're uh, my generation, that was funny. Oh my God, it is definitely still in there. Okay, next trick to do without uh, trying to damage anything is this trick. We're going to get a wrench in there and potentially a screwdriver under there because I don't want to damage, more than anything, I don't want to damage the case. And I don't want to damage this shaft. Um, now I'd love to be able to get two thin ones in there. Let's see about this. So I'm using the seal here as a leverage point on this one. Because I'm going to replace that seal anyhow. So I'm not worried if I damage that. There we go. It's coming out a little crooked now, so that'll be ready to come out. If I just gently pull up on it. Come on. Come on, dude. There we go. Woo! That is tight in there. Okay, and with the other gear. Okay, seals have to come out still. Back to time lapse. That was the first fuck up. Oops, demonetized. Um, I was just trying to get the seal out and at first I tried leveraging on it, didn't move. So I decided to use a slide hammer to try to punch it out from the backside. Turns out the backside was guarded by a washer and a C-clip. Um, so I was whacking away on it and going, it's not moving. What the hell's going on? So I tried attacking again from the other side and finally it budged. And then when it popped out, I realized there was a C-clip in there. Thankfully it didn't damage anything. Um, I looked, when I was looking through the manual, I didn't see anything about that. Mind you, the manual is like 25 pages long. It's pretty terrible. I really need some better information on these things. It'll be really handy. So if any of you guys have an actual shop manual, because I did download the shop manual, repair manual, and it doesn't have half of this thing in there. Um, so yeah, if you guys, if there was a better shop manual down the road, other than the steel factory shop manual that's like 25 pages long, I would really appreciate knowing about it. Charge your goddamn phone, dumbass. There we go, there's my phone, uh, low battery warning, so I gotta stick it back in the case. So you guys are gonna lose wide angle, and we're gonna go back to time lapse now so I can get the rest of the stuff out. Anyhow, back to it. So that is now completely disassembled. Um, I hope I caught those big flames on on the uh, video. I just had to heat this uh, this up to get that uh, bearing race out. Um, that's the easiest way to get them out is just warm up the outside. It expands and you just punch it out. But everything is now out of this thing. I actually decided I am going to leave actually that dowel 
in place. It's not going to hurt anything when I get this thing coated in whatever I decide to get it coated in. I'll just protect it. Um, anyhow, it is now ready for some significant cleaning. i got to clean all the grease off this first. And then uh, I'm thinking chemical cleaning is probably the best way to go. Maybe sandblasting, but if I do sandblasting, I've got a lot of areas I need to protect, which is doable. Because um, I wouldn't even need to get the inside of the case here. I need to cover this back up, which I could simply do by bolting the cover back onto it. Um, but I would have to close up all these orifices and all that fun stuff. Anyways, you can see that fuel tank's just pretty dang clean. There's a bit of residue in the corner here. I don't know if that's tank sealer or what that is. It's it's not varnish because uh, there's paint over top of it from the factory. Don't know. Anyhow, she's ready to be cleaned. Uh, back to time lapse because now I got to get the other part of the housing, the rest of the bits out of this thing. And then the rest of the bits out of that thing. And the top cover and the handle, because this handle does come apart. I actually did find one with the uh, dead man switch in it. But uh, I don't know how lucky I'm going to get that fastener out of there. Anyways, got to get to it. Okay, so for all of you guys yelling at your screen right now, going, that's an operator presence lever. I'm aware of that. However, I learned all my chainsaw nomenclature from my grandfather, who used to be a logger when he was younger. Now, I can't really help that. It's stuck in my head. I maybe will make an effort to say the right terminology, but probably not. I'll probably just keep calling it a dead man switch. Okay, so that was a lesser of the two evil situation there. That seal was not going to come out with how much corrosion was in here holding it in place. Um, so I made the decision to sacrifice the washer that holds the uh, bearing race in place and used it to pound the bearing race out first, then removed the C-clip and then pounded the seal out from the back because how the access is in here, um, I actually do have a seal hook, but that wasn't going to do anything either the way that this was stuck in there. I mean, generally I could just grab it with a pair of Nipex or Nipex, Nipex or Nipex, whatever you say pop it out it's not a problem but that was really in there so um, um even looking at the surfaces a little bit rough so i'll clean that up real carefully um hand sand that when it comes down to it in any case it is out now and i have a couple other fasteners i need to get out of here these things too and then uh or maybe i'll leave them uh well i could leave them it's getting powder coated that's fine actually yeah they can stay in place Anyhow, um, yeah, back to it. Time lapse. Alright, so here's the last part of this section of the video. Um, what I've got in front of me here are the parts that I am going to replace, or need replacing. Um, the handle's up here, it's disassembled. I almost got away on this entire disassembly without breaking one bolt, but I was kind of forced to on this one. Um, I managed to unthread the handle, these two sections thread together like that. Um, but I could not get the bolt out of this end. And this is the end that actually goes through, but it's so corroded in there, I'm going to have to drill it out. So I broke it off, I've center punched it, I'm going to drill that out. Um, but I am going to change this part of the handle for the one with the dead man switch on it, or, um, or this trigger lock, effectively, on, on the, for the palm there. Um, piston and cylinder, of course, those are going to get replaced for obvious reasons. Um, this is the one part I seem to be having a hard time finding. finding. Oh, oh, sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if anybody knows where I can get one of these 090G... Um, covers this is that goes over the sprocket that would be fantastic because you guys can see it's cracked um and it's it, it's cracked and corroded to the point that i'm 
I'm not even going to try to attempt, um, even if I could, weld this. I, I don't know if this is magnesium or aluminum, actually. Um, it seems they go back and forth depending on what generation. So if anybody actually knows um, if these are magnesium or aluminum, because I am trying to get a clear answer on it, and I can't seem to find one yet, um, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I'm going to replace the uh, uh, chainware um, plates here. These are just, you know, in case the chain comes off, they do have damage to them. So might as well replace them because they are damaged and that's they are sacrificial. Uh, the fan, I found one of these already on eBay. Uh, as you can, obviously, it's cracked, it's shot. Uh, the switch, there's quite a bit of corrosion in it. Um, I'm going to replace it just out of uh, due diligence because even this little rubber gasket's cracked. So I'm going to get a new switch for it. Uh, new chain wear, um, or, or chain um, wear protector. This goes against the crankcase. Uh, get a new one of these. The stator <laughs> needs to be replaced because all of it's falling apart. So that definitely needs to be replaced. I've already found one of those, a genuine steel one. I've also aftermarket ones, but I'm not going to get an aftermarket one. We're going to go genuine steel on this. Probably same with the cylinder. I found the uh, 58s and the 66s. I'm still looking for clarification on uh, the ability to stick one of the uh, 66s on this chainsaw, and if it's advisable to do so. So again, if you know anything about that, please feel free to comment. I will continue to research to find the answer to that. Um, the carburetor, now I was going to rebuild it. It's not in horrible shape, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a brand new genuine um, carburetor for this one, uh, Tolson. Um, so I'm going to get a new one, a new carburetor. I'm going to keep this one for spares. Uh, I'll clean it up, do what I need to, keep it for spares uh, just in case. Uh, but I will get a whole new one because the time it's going to take me to rebuild this, I can make more money going to work and then just buy a new one. <laughs> So it makes more sense because, you know, I'm not going to pull that linkage off to get the rust off of it, all that kind of stuff. It's a good sparrows card. So not that it wouldn't have worked. I, I don't know if it would have worked or not. I would have checked the diaphragm, all that fun stuff, but new one's better in this case. I'm uh, going to get a new ignition module here. Um, of course, the reason being is these are really old electronic parts. Might as well replace them as they're getting all crusty. They're actually, the points are still in good shape. So, you know, I'll save parts off of this just in case, but uh, might as well get a new one, just uh, due diligence. A new handle, of course, because um, that one's all trashed. Uh, I did find a new one of these covers, covers an uh, NOS one as well, so I'll be getting a new one of these covers. Um, and then a bunch of stuff in here. So this little heat shield, oh, this one, um, it's a bit corroded. I might save it. I might get a new one. I mean, they're cheap. Yeah, might as well. Um, this little rubber gasket that went in between the two halves of the case is a bit interesting. Um, I'm not sure... <laughs> I haven't seen this anywhere yet. I don't know if I can get a new one. I don't know if it's worth getting a new one or if I'm just going to use some caulking. Um, who knows? A new trigger mechanism will come with a new handle. So no worries there. Uh, found a new one of these. This is the uh, spark plug cover. It is rock hard now. So it's time to get a new one. Um, gasket for the carburetor. This one's actually still good, so I'll keep it as a spare, but I'll get a new one anyhow. Uh, fuel pickup, same thing. I'll get a new fuel filter. Um, the rubber on this is still good, but I'll probably pick one up as a spare anyhow. Um, and then use the new one and leave this one as a spare, actually. Um, new studs for the bar. Um, new hardware, basically, throughout the whole thing and new bearings. So now I have to go through and make a list of all the hardware that I need and get all the correct hardware. Also going to replace the governor assembly because it is quite rusted. And this does actually need to be completely free-floating. So rust on this is no good. Um, so that's going to get replaced. So basically what's in this box is what needs to be replaced. Um, spark plug, obviously. The seals, the gaskets, these little vents and everything like that, they all need to be replaced. So if you have a parts diagram hanging around for one of these things, because I've been looking around and I can't find a good one of them. Um, if you have the parts listings and diagrams, please let me know uh, or send me a link. Uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, I have to keep looking for myself. <laughs> I'm a bit lazy. Please help me. Anyways, so that's uh, what we got going on here. What you see there is what's going to be updated, refreshed, replaced. Um, and then the chains are going to get treated to a whole new paint job. It's going to get all cleaned up. Um, I was even contemplating if some of this is aluminum, possibly anodizing it. I don't know. Maybe get these felling dogs chrome plated. Ooh. Because, I mean, they're not in bad shape could chrome plate them that'd be kind of cool could just powder coat them anyhow this saw will be just as good as new when i'm done 
or at least as close as possible for a machine that's possibly older than I am. Oh yeah, one more thing actually in that in that um, thought, if you guys know where the serial numbers are on these, if there are serial numbers on these ones, I don't know. Um, I have not been able to find a serial number anywhere. Parts numbers, of course, yes. But serial numbers, no, I haven't found any yet. Um, if you know where they are, let me know, because I would love to know if there is a serial number and what year this is, because they stopped production in 85, and I would like to know how old, much older it is than I am, or if it is older than me. But uh, that's it for today. That's Farm Shop Projects. I hope you guys follow along with this one. I know if I post a few chainsaw boards, um, it's definitely going to get some attention because these are not very common. And it's going to be a quite a neat one. I even looked up on uh, YouTube. And I couldn't find a video of someone going through and rebuilding one of these. So I may be the first one showing this on video. I don't know. Um, actually, if you know someone who has put on a video, can you please let me know? Because I would like to see if they made any mistakes and make not to make sure I don't make them myself. Yeah, I've talked enough now. Anyhow, I'll let you guys go. This has been a long one. It's going to be a really long one. <laughs> it's, there's going to be a lot of long ones on this one. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, comment down below, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of fun stuff. Don't subscribe if you don't want to, but hey, it helps out. Thanks. Bye.